It is. It's out of out of every episode. It's the lowest rated one. It's called The Underdwellers, season one, episode Sounds six. Awesome. I know it's a great name. Um, it is. It is colloquially in my apartment known as the episode where everybody in Gotham is just a little high, like just <laughs> just a little. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the best moments from Batman the Animated Series. And to start us off, we are going to ask Nina to tell us about the episode that we told her to watch. Because this is a show (laughs) that she didn't watch. And that's fine because it was on before she was born, I think. When was it on? That can't be true. It was on in like the early, maybe you were like an infant when this show was on. When did it, when did it start? You have to know this. 92, 93. I was born in 1990. I'm not, you know. So you were a monkey sense of time because you've been alive for centuries. (laughs) I've been alive for so long. No, I just, I don't want to be like the Gen Z of the, of this channel because I'm not. No. But Um, to be be fair, to be perfectly fair, this is a show you haven't seen and that's okay because it was well before your time. It's a show I feel like, like when I sat down to watch this episode, it was a show that I felt like was like a cultural osmosis thing because I have Mm -hmm. just seen like clips of it used in many other kind of, you know, contexts and properties for so long. Like the, the way Batman's drawn in Batman, the animated series is like super iconic. And I feel like that's the way I've always seen like a drawn, a cartoon Batman look. Does that make sense? Like, it's, it's always been like that depiction. That's what it is, right? Right, yeah. Like, I'm sure there have been other Batman, you know, shows and stuff, but it's like, that's the one I understand. It's for yeah. me, for me, mine is the Super Friend style Batman. Cause when yeah. I was a kid, oh, yeah. Batman and Robin would team up with like Scooby Doo. Yeah. And it would just be goofy and dumb. And like, there was Adam West Batman. So that was Batman for me. So then when this show right. came on when I was in like elementary school, I was like, oh my God. And it just like blew the brain out of the back of my head. It was super. They let you good, in an so. elementary school in your 50s? <laughs> yes, I'm incredibly stupid. <laughs> that track. But go but ahead. Nina, we, we, Can we so, put up a picture so of list. my my spirit animal, Boo Boo the Fool? Anyway, yeah. So we got this list. <laughs> we have this list on Looper.com, and one of the first ones on here is uh, heart, the episode Heart of Ice, particularly the snow globe, which you'll see at the end of the episode. So that was the yeah. one. When oh, we were the one where it turns out that Saint Elsewhere was all. <laughs> yeah, it was well, all, all happened in my... Batman the Animated Series. No, That's so right. uh, you. T- Brian told me to watch this episode. I'm just going to, because I've already had my dirty laundry hung out to dry. That's what happened. It's fine. (laughs) And I'm so excited for the comments on this one. Yikes. It's Uh, fine. (laughs) So I did watch Heart of Ice. Really good episode. Like, yeah. And yeah, I mean, Mr. Freeze is, as you both told me, a pretty lame villain, all things considered, especially in other depictions. But this was a night, like a very perfectly contained 22 minute you know, saga of a guy. It was also like very depressing. Like, you know, his, he loses his wife. He just want, he wants to make Ferris Doyle, right. Who's voiced by Mark Hamill, the evil corrupt CEO of goth corp. You know, he wants to make him suffer. So Mark Hamill is like well known as being the voice of the Joker on the show. Right. Before he got that gig regularly, he did this role because of the way that they recorded this all. Oh, dip. Okay. Because yeah. Yeah. He had this role first and then Tim Curry was supposed to be the Joker. I think this is how it went. And okay. then for either Tim Curry had to drop out or they just decided it wasn't a good fit. Either way, Mark Hamill got the role, I think, after this. And so, yeah. Right. But yes. Well, I know chronologically this this series comes later, but I like to call that like Law and Order Syndrome or like uh, <laughs> early in like Law and Order Special Victims Unit, an actress played a woman accused of assaulting like a male dancer. And then uh-huh. two seasons later, she was the district attorney. And I was like... <laughs> She really, she really. Uh, you really like, what a glow up for this her woman, eyes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Glow up. So yeah, the system <laughs> so, works, you guys. Really does. She was she was reformed. So yeah, so I watched um, Heart of Ice, really solid episode. So Batman gets a cold from a freeze gun, which I'm not, you know, like from an epidemiology standpoint, I don't know if that really tracks, but uh, whatever. It works. Um, it works. It's okay. But the died, best, right? it, it lowered his <laughs> immune system, and yeah. it, he caught a cold. That's right. why they call it a cold. Okay. Science. So, sure. but the best part of the episode by far is that the chicken soup that Alfred gives <laughs> to Batman slash Bruce Wayne is what yeah. ends up defeating Mr. Freeze. And I was like, yeah. oh, it's like chicken soup for the cold soul or something. <laughs> like <Ooh>. Set up. <laughs> Pay yeah, off. set up and it's pay beautiful. off. But it was just it's like beautiful. such a such a doofy little piece of set up and pay off. And I just I loved it. It was extremely fun. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice little bite size episode. I mean, animation's always shorter, right? Even if a full length animated movie is never more than like 90 minutes because it just takes so long. Often, like yeah. logistically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a very labor intensive process, but yeah. Super fun episode. Thanks for telling me to watch it. I want to go back You're and watch welcome. more. <laughs> it was yeah. <laughs> what, one of the things that we we talked about a little bit in our chat before we hopped on here was the fact that, and you alluded to this just a minute ago, that um, prior to this, Mister Freeze was just a very lame villain. This backstory, mm -hmm. this character wasn't really in place, and so when they were making this episode, they wrote a tragic villain and this real like he's really cold, pun intended, and very like emotionally cut off because yeah. of the accident that he right. suffered. Right, doesn't he say like he really can't feel anything anymore because right. because he's he has to live in the sub-zero suit because right. he f yeah, he fell into his own cold research. Yeah, science. And he's just very sad all the time. Yeah. It's I mean, it's a beautiful little metaphor and it's just kind of this weirdly like it's a mini movie. It's a 22 mm -hmm. minute mini movie yeah. and it's perfect. It's got a great three act structure. You've got your main antagonist, your secondary yep. antagonist. Uh, the, the setup, the payoff with the chicken soup. It's just, it's just perfect. Really good and voice acting. Really solid voice acting across the board. Amazing yeah. voice acting. And just that sad um, moment so of Dr. Freeze in his jail cell, like apologizing to his late wife for not right. getting the revenge that he promised. And Batman even feels bad about it. And you're like, yeah. oh. Everything wow, in this okay. show <laughs> is generally a gigantic bummer. And that's why it, it's so... <laughs> It's really cool because at the time, like this, this was groundbreaking at the time because they were trying to put, they were trying to do this noir kind of more adult look at this, at, at Batman, but do it for right. a kid's show. And, and they had to fight standards and practices all That's the time. That's the tone like, that they were going for. Then they nailed it. They had to like, they had to like argue to let Batman punch people. They had to argue <laughs> to let bad guys have guns. That right. Batman yeah. wouldn't get shot by, you know, like mm -hmm. right. Just all these things that we take for granted as stuff that you can kind of get away with in most, you know, things, most things in media. Like at that time, it was just like you can't do that. This is a kids show. This is for children. What right. are you doing? And so, you know, the fact that it can end tragically, and there's we're going to talk more about this stuff in a few minutes. But yeah, just this is one of my favorites. I'm really, I'm excited you finally saw it, and I'm excited that yeah. you're definitely going to watch more. We're we're going to have more conversations about it. Yeah. I mean, you're going to message me every day and ask if I have. So I, yeah. you know, I already Which wanted to, but now today? I'm going to get bullied about it. So extra incentive <laughs> for me. That's what I do. I bully people at work to watch cartoons <laughs> I like. The way that the tables have turned on our lives collectively, that we're now the ones bullying people into watching Batman instead yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is not what it was like when I was a kid. Tom, <laughs> Tom, what about you? What is, what is your pick from this list? I'm glad you asked, Brian. Uh, so I, I I I don't know. I feel like this the show has such a such a huge following and 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 such a, a passionate following that kind of all of the the best episodes have kind of been have been talked about. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there, there were only what there were four seasons. There were a hundred and nine episodes, something like that. Something the, it was. I think there were three seasons on Fox, and then it moved to WB, and they changed the animation style to modernize it. Okay. And that was the fourth season. So that's why. If you look on HBO Max, the first couple of seasons look very classic, very kind of like retro styling. And then yeah. the, mm -hmm. the final season's very much in the vein of like the Justice League Unlimited cartoon, the Superman animated series cartoon. Like it's a style by then. So yeah. Everything kind of like got got really streamlined into this one style. But anyway, I, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, not at all. We're talking about a thing we're excited about and that thing's Batman. I What I decided that I wanted to do was I put a little bit of sauce on the on the prompt. I put okay. some sauce on it, Brian. Good. And what I decided I to do was to try and find, in, in, instead of the best episode, I, I, I decided I wanted to find redemption for the worst one. I think I know what the worst one is. I would. What What, what do you think it is? Because I went to IMDb. I, I looked it up. I, I, I found which one has I have two the choices. lowest rating. Okay. Hit I have me. two choices for what this is. One mm -hmm. is Tiger Tiger. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Was that it? That's not it. Where they turn Catwoman into a Catwoman and it sucks. I mean, that I was, don't, that was a I don't see any reason that why one. that would suck. That, sounds that one was was one of them. I think the one where I think his name was like Nostromos or something, where Batman takes on a, a grifter who's like all about astrology. That was another one Ooh, that was kind that's of great. that one. No, it's not that one. OK, is not it the one, one with is it I've got Batman in my basement? Is it that one? No, but I thought about that one. Is it the one where they go down into the sewers with it the is. sewer king guy? OK, it that was is the one. the one with I the knew it was one guy. of those. 
one of those ones. It was There's one an of those episode like with a sewer king, like mole people. Yeah, he like abducts a bunch of kids. Tom, tell tell us about this episode. I want to watch this I one. I would love to. So it's it it is. It's out of out of every episode. It's the lowest rated one. It's called The Underdwellers, season one, episode Sounds six. Awesome. I know it's a great name. Um, it is it is colloquially in my apartment known as the episode where everybody in Gotham is just a little high, like just just a little. <laughs> Not like all the way high, not like lie on the couch high, but like definitely kind of spacey. Uh, like ate, episode, ate a few too many CBD gummies, didn't actively go further than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there wasn't supposed to be CBD THC in gummy. this, but like I feel. Uh, yeah. So the episode starts out with this: the, a, a lady gets her purse stolen by somebody small, and she says a leprechaun did it. <laughs> And then Batman runs after this this small person. The alleged leprechaun. <laughs> and loses them and then goes back to the Batcave and says, I think a leprechaun stole a purse. And <laughs> Alfred at this point is listening to classical music, but he's like bopping out to it. Like he's he's having a groovy time doing this. And then Alfred says, it probably wasn't a leprechaun though, right? And Batman says, maybe I need a rest. And then Alfred says, maybe you need a rest. And then Batman says, I think it was a leprechaun. And uh, <laughs> it's not how I remember this. This is, it, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a condensed version. Uh, paraphrase. Okay. <laughs> it turns out the leprechaun thing, by the way, just a real zebra of a diagnosis, if you're asking me. Like they find a small yeah. guy and he's like, you know what? I probably, it turns out, of course, it's, it's actually a kid. Uh, the kid is part of a Dickensian orphan sewer gang being run by a real hat on the hat original villain named the Sewer King. Who right. was played by an actor named Michael Padicky, who was a character actor who actually he played a goon in the original, like 1966 Batman TV show with Adam nice. West. He was one of King Tut's goons. Also a Klingon in the Trouble with Triples episode of Star Trek. Nina, have you watched Star Trek yet? No. What's Tom, the I actor's haven't. name? Michael Padicky. He's the he's the one in the uh, or Padicky. Excuse me. He is. The one in the bar who says that the Enterprise should be hauled away as garbage. That guy? Okay. You know what I'm it's talking not, about? But it's not one of the three Klingons who came back in Deep Space Nine to team up with Dax. No, but he did okay. uh, show up again in uh, Next Generation as a different character. It doesn't matter. I'm getting off topic. Doesn't matter. Point <laughs> Sorry. Is, Sorry. The guy's we never get like, off topic on this show, so that's really unacceptable. It's never Sorry. happened before. Uh, this is unprecedented. He's got a writing cloak. He's got glasses with one lens blacked out and like a, a walking stick. And he doesn't let the, the children speak. He just sends them out to steal him. Very Studio Ghibli looking food, like this delicious cartoon food. <laughs> and he owns like at minimum eight alligators. It, it's it's not clear how many alligators he has in total. I, I, I thought I clocked eight of them. They've all got alligator collars. It's unclear where he's getting those. I think the Dickensian orphans are probably producing them in a sweatshop somewhere below the surface. In a, oh, okay. God, I thought I thought you meant as like a biological thing. I was like, I was, yeah. okay. So <laughs> no, the collars. <laughs> the real winning detail of the episode for me is that uh, we find out two things that the Batmobile can do uh, that I was not aware of up until this point. The first one is that it can transform into a garbage dumpster nice. as a form of disguise, which is what it is. And then the second one is that it has like a built in tiny television screen that appears to be the Batman finds one of the kids and he brings him back to Wayne Manor. And, uh, on the drive over, I guess to, to, to stop the kid from, from realizing where he's going. He pops out this little television screen in the, the dashboard of the car, and it plays a spirally thing, and then it puts the kid to sleep. So oh. Batman has like a, a kid's sleep machine. Well, didn't we actually see that in Batman Begins? Didn't didn't he have something like that in the Batmobile to put Rachel to sleep when they were going to the uh, to the bat the Batcave, or was she or was she suffering? A no, concussion? she was just she was drugged up on the uh, <laughs> oh, on the, the fear that. gas, and she was about to die. It's I don't the, really darn. love this the is, idea of a. Uh, a forced sleep machine mm -mm. in the Batmobile nope. to be used on right. women and nope. children. Using yeah. it on kids. Yep. Mm -mm. And ladies. No, super weird. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. bad, bad idea. Don't do that. So you were going to redeem this episode, right, Tom? I was you haven't try. done a great job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It turned out there was nothing. It's just really bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, it's a trash so, can. So I like this one of the alligators. Mm -hmm. Like there That's why it's on this list. That is one of the the, the lesser episodes. Uh, other ones on this list that we'll briefly mention 
this is this is this is about moments from Batman the animated series. So Nina, mm-hmm. you talked about the chicken soup. Tom, you talked about the Batmobile as dumpster as your favorite moment. From I did episode. love that. Yeah, that's awesome. So on this list, we've got the snow globe from the very end of Heart of Ice, which is a pretty classic, iconic moment. Uh, we've got Batman's identity revealed in the strange secret of Bruce Wayne with a very old Batman villain that they adapted for the animated series, Hugo Strange, who shows up in the Batman Arkham City video game. Yeah. He's a very pulpy villain. He's got like a thick German accent and like dark glasses. And he's like, nice. I will capture the Batman or whatever he says. That's it. Direct quote. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, scenes from uh, Bat- Bruce Wayne battling Batman in the episode Perchance to Dream. So in that one, Mad Hatter, he captures Batman, sticks the device on his head. Next thing Batman knows, he wakes up, he's Bruce Wayne, he's not Batman anymore. And so he's going through this life, he's not Batman, but Batman's out there doing stuff, but he gets to be Bruce Wayne with living parents. And eventually he freaks out because he can't deal with the fact that, you know, he gets the sense that this isn't real and he confronts Batman of, of this reality and he figures out that he's, he thinks he's in a dream. And so Bruce Wayne is like, all right, I'm going to jump off this high tower now. And Batman's like, if you do that, you'll die. And he's like, I think I'll wake up. But either way, it's better than living a lie. And he's stone cold, tries to just, he just jumps, he jumps to his death, basically. And then he wakes up and he beats the bad guy. And it's like, again, like, it's all a gigantic bummer, but it's all very, like, thematically. Sure. It's cool stuff. It's, it's, it's cool stuff for, it's cool stuff for kids to figure out. That's very, what was that, what was that uh, Alan Moore Superman story? The gift, uh, what is it? The gift for the man, for the who, man has who has everything. everything. That's yeah. what it's called. It's very that. Um, yeah. There's another one on here, the Batman Unite, where he teams up with the Grey Ghost, voiced by Adam West. Great oh, episode. yeah. There's a lot of good ones on here. I went off menu to pick two of my own favorites. Because again, like I was like, I want to talk about this show, but I don't want to pick something from this list just because I know that there's stuff that I like that I want to bring up. And one of them was an episode called The Joker's Favorite. Um, and it starts off with this guy named Charlie just driving his car and he's all like mad and He's like, eh, everything stinks. My life is terrible. And finally, he gets cut off by someone driving a station wagon. And he's like, that's it. I'm going to give this guy a piece of my mind. He's like at the end of his rope. And he starts, he drives after this guy who cut him off. He like bumps his car with his car, which is like in a cartoon is fine. But in reality, that's like, no, you have to call. You have to call a cop. You have to get mm-hmm. the insurance involved. But right. anyway, let's pretend that that could happen, that you could play bumper cars with your car. Anyway, he starts cursing at the driver and then he finds out that the guy driving it is the joker and he freaks he freaks out because he's like i just started screaming at the joker and this great this great scene uh ensues where he's like running away from the joker trying to get away and the joker's following him and um it's like it's this first of all it's amazing whenever like i know you guys don't drive but when i when i when i drive and i do something goofy yeah, I just do you under the bus. There. Another driving <laughs> the reference. bus that we neither of us can drive. <laughs> that, you're both riding because you don't drive. <laughs> but whenever I drive and I do something dumb, right? I'm like, oh, this guy is gonna see. I don't want to sit next to him at a light. He's gonna look at me because I just like cut him off, and it was, it's like that, but like a homicidal maniac is coming. Right, to get you like you like shot. you look over and it's Tony Soprano, but it right, and you're or like, Joker, oh, or Tony yeah, or- Soprano and Joker makeup. Even yeah. scarier. <laughs> <laughs> no, just like someone that you know is like trouble. Yeah. That's going to yeah. m- seriously so, come after you. I don't know if James Gandolfini and clown makeup is chocolate and peanut butter quite the way that you think it is. This, <laughs> yeah. Those are two. You want to see it. But, yeah. but it's it's this amazing moment because it's it's one of the first times in the in the series that you see someone reacting to the Joker who's not Batman. It's I was someone just going like, to say, it seems like it's outside yeah. the context of Batman for like one second, right. which is cool. Well, for most of the show, Batman is barely in this episode. He shows up really? in the last six minutes to save the day. And it's basically about this wow. guy. He like, like after, he just after pisses the, off Joker, the Joker by accident, he, yeah. he pisses off the Joker. The Joker takes his ID. He's like, you owe me a favor. Bye. And then it cuts to two years later. And this dude has moved to Ohio and changed his name. Oh, he gets no. a phone call from the Joker. He's like, mm. I got that favor. And he's like, you got the wrong number. He's like, no, I got the right number. Here's your whole family. And again, kids cartoon. Amazing stuff. 
Ugh. It just so happens also, this is a really good episode for a lot of reasons. But I love that this episode to- teaches kids like witness protection does not work. They will yeah. always <laughs> find you. <laughs> Don't bother. Don't bother. They'll find you the anyway. bad guys will always find you. Yeah. Wow. You can't hide. Um, but this also happens Bye, to kids. be the, fe- the episode that features the f- very first, <laughs> literally first Tiny appearance, Tins. the first appearance of Harley Quinn. Oh, yeah. Wow. First wow. appearance ever, and How she's is this just not on our list. This is a good one. Well, that, I mean, that's the thing. She, it's there's so much to choose from with this. Show. Yeah, but um, she's just there in the Joker's hideout when he's like complaining about his, you know, he's got this big scheme where he's going to blow up the the all, like the police force because they're doing a big dinner for for Commissioner Gordon, and so Harley Quinn is just there, just like yeah, the commissioner sucks or whatever she says. It's just like right. She's this amazing character who's fully formed from day one. Right. And in my opinion, a lot of the backstory they've kind of given her diminishes kind of her strength of just like mm-hmm. this, this great sassy side character who's just this amazing extra, extra punch to, to the Joker. And I like that, that Harley has gotten a lot more uh, starring roles and that we've learned more about her yeah. generally. I feel like the backstory that she was a, a psychiatrist who fell in love with the Joker doesn't, and also like an Olympic level gymnast. These two, these two things don't quite go together for me, but I'm just, I'm picking nits. Harley's great. She's a great character. It's great that she's introduced in this episode. This is a classic episode. The other one I watched really briefly because I've been talking for a while is, um, it's called Read My Lips. And I've mentioned before my oh, love no. of the ventriloquist and Scarface. Oh, Brian. Okay, so, but here's the thing. I've got, I've got my moment picked out. So for, for the last one, the moment was when the Joker runs this guy down and he's like hiding from the Joker and you get to see someone really afraid of the Joker for this one. There's the reveal that, that the big bad guy is a, is a puppet. And this is the face that they show Bruce Wayne making a uh, Bratman making in the episode. I've shared it in our chat. Oh, like that's oh. the big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> he looks he's just like, like the dick. <laughs> he's straight up just like, what the is going on <laughs> just he cannot even deal with what he's seeing and i just love it i love them i just started laughing because i was like yeah if i was a crime fighter and i saw that the seriously big mob boss who's committing these yeah. amazing heists all over gotham was literally a puppet i might make that face too it seems appropriate yeah so anyway outstanding good show Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. Wow!